Hey guys, Caleb with Black Pearl Media. Thank you so much for stopping by. And in this video, we're gonna lift the Z up, get it all prepped up, get it ready to have the transmission dropped. But while we're in there, we're actually gonna look at the oiling system, which is something I've gotten a lot of questions on. And this video is long overdue. So let's get into it. All right guys, so as you can see, the Z is still here. I still love this car. I'm still gonna be using it. It's been killing me that it hasn't been on the road for these last couple months, but we got a house and sometimes those kind of priorities change, but this car is not gone from this channel, not by a long shot. But don't mind the mess. We had to pick up a bunch of stuff, including the snowblower and the, uh, the lawnmower and everything like that. So I'm glad to have these here, but they are taking up some space. So we are gonna clean up the area a little bit, but the goal of today's video is to get the Z up off the ground as much as possible because we're actually gonna be dropping the transmission probably in the next video and uh, we have a new clutch for it. Super excited to get it back on the road. But like I said, guys, the oiling system is something that I have not really touched on or have a dedicated video to. So I'm just gonna kinda explain what the setup is and I'll try and show you firsthand because obviously we're lifting up the Z, so may as well go ahead and show you the oiling system firsthand. Let's go. Still a ton of clutter though, so let's get that taken care of. Okay, that's much better. All right, I actually foresee this taking longer and being more complicated than I think just because I gotta lift it up as much as possible. So that means I have to probably lift it up a little in the back, then a little in the front, then a little bit more in the back and the front, and I'll just be running around. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a time lapse of that so we don't waste anybody's time. And I can kind of focus on it. I don't wanna die. guys she's up off the ground that was a little bit more of a tour than I thought it was gonna be but I wanted to take my time make sure that nothing fell or damaged anything and we didn't do any of that so I'm gonna call it a success she's probably sitting about a foot and a half off the ground which is great and there's even a little bit more room we could go up some more if need be I only have two of these and two of these those are maxed out these are barely extended so if I can get another set we could probably go up another like six inches at least but this might be enough room to drop everything we need to drop also it's unbelievably filthy on the car and especially under the car there are so many cobwebs I'm gonna have to clean those out before I start doing work under there because there's there's spiders everywhere really gross feels like this is kind of more like a barn find than just like my pride and joy Ugh, but we're not gonna worry about that because we are doing something about it. We are getting this thing going again. It's gonna happen very soon and I'm super excited about it. And uh, you know, I'm just gonna take my time. This is my first project in the new garage. That's like, you know, pretty big and it's the first thing I've done on the Z. And you know, it's a big thing for me. So I'm gonna take my time, savor it, and just make sure we do it safely and secure and uh, pump out some good content for you guys along the way. So I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you sub and comment below. All right guys, so at this time I'm gonna go ahead and grab my light, my GoPro, we're gonna dive under the car and I'm just gonna show you how the oiling system works and how it's routed. All right guys, it's a little bit nasty under here but here is the oil pan. This is the bottom of the engine and right here is the Z1 oil pan spacer. That's this uh, silver bit right there. And it's a pretty easy install. It's basically just an extension which means that you can store more oil but it also comes pre-drilled for your AN fittings for your return and your feed line. So you get your oil from here and it gets returned from here as well. Up here you can see 
with more light. Um, there's a sandwich plate on there for the oil filter and the oil cooler, um, but we'll loop back around to that. The lines get fed up through here. This is the passenger side, and they get routed all along the passenger side of the car. Pretty much follows the fuel lines all the way back, but uh, yeah, it goes all the way back down to the scavenge pump. So let's go talk about the scavenge pump. This is probably not the best thing to do with a white t-shirt on, but I'm doing this for you guys, so hit that subscribe button. All right guys, so as you can see, the lines go all the way back and they come right up here to the scavenge pump. And the scavenge pump is a really, really important piece of gear in this whole system. It's like the beating heart of this system. Looking from the back of the car, it's right under here. Here's what I'd like to say about the scavenge pump, this one in particular. This one's doing very well for me. It's working just fine but it was leaking oil for a little bit. So uh, Eric up at Limp Mode Tuning was like, hey man, put some RTV on it, pop the, the plate off of it, and I did that. And I think I did okay, because it's definitely not leaking like it used to, but it makes funny noises every once in a while, almost like it's not functioning very clean, like maybe there's like a, you know, like a sputtering. But then after like a couple seconds, it clears, and um, you know, it makes me a little nervous, but at the same time, I was driving it for a long time with that that little noise, and it seemed to do just fine. Now I had a Turbo Works. I don't remember the code. It was their, their biggest one. It was like four hundred dollars on eBay, and everybody was saying to get that one, but it ended up failing. The internals of it failed, and because of that, it blew my previous turbo, the Precision sixty two sixty two. Uh, also, there was another design, which I'm going to talk about, which could have contributed to that, but when we dug into it, it was the scavenge pump that was the issue. The one that's currently on there that I just showed you is actually a marine grade, so it's like for boats and stuff, and it was like 60 bucks. I don't know the code of it. I was just looking around it, and I didn't see any code or like serial number or anything. I think it's just very generic. Uh, I did track it down one time last year, but it was out of stock. Uh, but Limp Mode Tuning, Pat knows exactly where to get them. He probably has a few in store. So if you're looking to get one, hit up Limp Mode Tuning on Instagram, tell them I sent you, and ask about their scavenge pumps and what they use on the rear mount systems. They'll be able to hook you up. Now I'm gonna continue to monitor this because my faith in it is not 100%. It's like 75%. So I haven't done a huge track day, like a long, good track day with this car and this setup. I've done an autocross event and it did superb. It did perfectly fine. Uh, but I don't wanna tell you guys with 100% certainty, like, hey, go and get this scavenge pump for sure. I'm gonna do more testing and time trials on it before I can recommend it 100%. But so far, this $60 pump has outperformed a $400 pump. So I guess it's not always about the price tag on on everything. It is on most things, not on everything. So that's what I'm gonna tell you about the, uh, the scavenge pump. So if you guys have any questions on that, drop them in the comments and uh, you know let's have a discussion about it. Maybe you guys have uh, experienced something else with a different scavenge pump. I'd love to hear your recommendations as well. There's, they're easy enough to swap out, so they're they're right there which is another reason why rear mount systems are pretty cool. I mean, just look at all that access. Amazing. So then you'll notice that it goes into this little guy right here, which is a little catch can. And what this does is it holds any residual rollback of oil. So you shut the car off, the pressure's off, and there's a little bit of oil left in. So it rolls into there and it collects, and it does that before it backs up all the way into the turbo, which is not good for the seals. Previously, I did have some oil coming uh, out of the exhaust and it would burn a lot of white smoke for the first couple of pulls and then clear up. It was annoying and there was getting oil all over the place. It was really annoying. So that really, really helped. It's also important to run a breather line. So this doesn't go to anything. This just is a, a breather line for it. So that's pretty much everything back here. It's just the scavenge pump, Make sure you make up one of these tanks or reservoirs, and then that's pretty much it back here. Then you come up front here and you have the oil cooler. So it runs into a sandwich plate where the oil filter is, and it goes off into the oil cooler. And this is really important to have. Um, you know, it makes me a lot less worried about oil temperatures, and it just seems to run very smoothly. So 
This is uh, just a simple setup. I think I got this one on Amazon for like 60 bucks. Now I'd love to get into the wiring side of things for you guys, but honestly, the wiring is something I'm totally not confident in. I'd give you all the wrong information. But if you go into the playlist, one of the first of the three build videos has all the wiring in it. So I'm sure you can pick up more from Denny as he was installing it. I was there with him. Um, I just don't quite get all that stuff yet. I don't want to feed you guys bad information. So I'll link that video down below as well. What I can say is that when you turn on the car, you can hear that scavenger pump go ahead and fire up. Actually, I can actually show you that right now. The car hasn't been started in a little while, but I know it does start and I can get you an up close and personal video of that scavenge pump firing up. Let's go check it out. Did you hear it? See what I mean? Not bad at all, it works every time. So I know there's a lot of lines involved and that's the one thing that I've heard from people say, you know, hey, that's just way too many lines for me and it's too complicated of an install. It's really not that bad. So if you guys are debating whether to do a standalone system or one right off of the oil pan, I think they're both good options, but the oiling pan, if you're wondering if that's gonna be too complicated, I can assure you it's really not that complicated and you know it's just a matter of buying extra uh, lengths of line and you know you're pretty much good to go. It's just a matter of routing it really and the routing is not that difficult. You basically just follow the fuel lines back, they tuck right underneath there, they're not really hung low or anything and uh, don't forget to put a check valve in there whatever you do. I forgot to mention that there is a check valve and that just helps stop the flow of oil back flowing into the turbo. So yeah guys, that's the oiling system for a rear mount turbocharged 350Z. This will work basically on any car, uh, but this is just my car I'm, I'm speaking on here. If anybody wants to do a remote or has a remote or knows somebody who has a remote oiling system, drop it in the comments. I am curious about their setup. I'd love to check it out. Maybe if they got an Instagram I could look at. I'm always just looking to improve things and just look at what other people have going on. This overall is a pretty interesting build, at least in my eyes, that's why I wanted to do it. And I love seeing other people pursuing this build. There's at least three or four of you that have reached out saying that you're working on your project. I hope you guys are doing really good. And I love all the progress and when you guys send me DMs on Instagram and everything. So keep that up. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And I'm looking forward to getting to 5,000 subs by the end of the year. So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit the sub button. Help me get to my goal. And uh, we'll see you on the next video where we'll hopefully hopefully going to be pulling out the transmission and successfully installing a clutch so we can get this back on the road finally. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.